it's very important to be able to do a measurement when we do experiments in science. One can measure quantitatively, meaning that we get a numerical measurement like 20 degrees Celsius. Or we can measure qualitatively, where we don't actually get a number, but we get a description like hot or cold. The term increment means the space between two lines on a scale. So in this lesson, we need to get to understand what tools we use to measure and then how we can read a scale using the increments of the scale. So let's start off by looking at some measuring instruments. If we want to measure length, height, breadth, width or thickness, we can use a ruler or something like it, like a measuring tape. If we want to measure volume, volume means three-dimensional space, there are a number of instruments we can make use of. Some of them are shown here. We can use a beaker. It doesn't give a very accurate measurement though because the increments are not fine. So we might rather want to use a measuring cylinder which is better suited to measuring but more accurately because the increments are finer because it's a narrower container than the beaker. If we want to be even more accurate, we can use one of these shown here. This one is a pipette. This is a handheld pipette. In the laboratory, you might rather have one which you suck with your mouth with. This one you suck by pressing a knob, whereas the one you probably have in your laboratory, you suck with your mouth, you put your mouth to the pipette's mouth, and then you suck up. You have to be very careful that you don't actually swallow some of the liquid. And it's not such a good idea to do this with a dangerous liquid like concentrated acid. Now, a pipette measures up, sucks up a certain volume of fluid. So you can get a 10 milliliter pipette, maybe a 100 milliliter pipette, depending on how much you're wanting to measure. With the one which you use with your mouth, you suck up the fluid to above the level. Then you stop the mouth of your pipette with your thumb and you gradually open up a space between the mouth of the pipette and your thumb to allow some air in which pushes down the level of the fluid until it reaches a specified mark on the pipette. You must make sure the bottom of the meniscus of your fluid is on that mark and then you will have sucked up and measured a particular amount of fluid according to what the pipette says. If it's a five milliliter pipette, for example, you would have measured out five milliliters of that fluid. This is a burette. You would use a retort stand to hold the burette in place. Now you use a burette if you're wanting to know how much fluid you have added to something else. You would put a funnel in the mouth of the burette, add fluid into it, open the tap so that the fluid can flow through the tap and fill the mechanism there, and adjust the tap until the bottom of the meniscus of your fluid would be at a particular mark. Then you would put a beaker, for example, under the tap, and you would open up the tap and then close it once you have added however much fluid you wanted to the beaker. And then you would see at what level is the bottom of the meniscus now and then get the difference between the two measurements and that would then tell you how much you've actually added. This last one is a volumetric flask. You use a volumetric flask to measure out a particular amount of fluid when you are making a standard solution. A standard solution is a solution where you know what the concentration is. So you would add a certain mass of the solute, like maybe table salt, and then you would add water, making sure that the bottom of the meniscus is on the level of that mark. And then you would shake that up, and then you would have a solution where you know how much solute, for example, table salt, you've got in how much solution. And so then you'd know the concentration. If you want to measure temperature, you can use a thermometer. To measure mass, you use a mass scale. Here are a number of different kinds of mass scales. In this first one, we place the object which we want to know the mass of in one pan, and then we balance it with weights that we put into the other pan. When the two pans have the same mass, then the beam hangs horizontally. Each of the masses that we add to the other pan is of known mass, and its mass is written on it, and so we can just add up the masses that is equal to the mass of our object which we wanted to measure. The same kind of principle applies to this middle mass scale. It's just a bit more sensitive because we can also use this beam in the middle for finer tuning for in between the values given by the actual masses that we can put on. 
You're probably more familiar with this kind of mass scale. This one is actually a bathroom scale which you can just stand on and it's got an analog display, meaning that it's got a pointer which points around to numbers on the scale here. You might be more familiar with a digital scale where instead of having a pointer like this, you rather have a digital display little numbers with lights in showing out the value. And so, of course, that is another way of measuring mass with an electronic scale and in a way that makes measuring fairly easy. Here we have the instrument for measuring weight. It's called a Newton meter, also called a spring balance. You hang the object you want to measure onto this hook and then gravity pulls the object downwards, stretching the spring that's inside the Newton meter. And there's a little marker at the end of the spring and that moves as the spring is stretched. And then you can read off the value on the scale. Then to measure time, of course, we can use a watch or a stopwatch. This is a digital stopwatch that I've got here. You press the button to get it started, then it starts at zero, and then it counts up the seconds from the instant that you pressed the button until the moment that you press the button again or press the stop button. And then the value that it tells you there is the time interval between when you started and when you stopped the stopwatch. As I've said already, you can measure quantitatively or qualitatively. For example, we could measure temperature qualitatively by just describing it, saying things like hot, warm, cool, cold, or quantitatively with an actual number. Obviously, there are a lot of advantages of rather using the number because if I say it's hot today, what do I really mean? It depends on what I consider to be hot. Is 36 degrees hot or maybe 25 degrees hot? Whereas if I say it very clearly as a number, 25 degrees, 36 degrees, then it's not so subjective. 